both the input qi minus 1 and the output qi are, are going to be huge. Right? So I can't store either one of these entirely all on one machine. If I could store them all on one machine, then this would be pretty easy. If they were, or even if they're, especially if they're all in memory. If they're all in memory, this would be easy to do. Um, I, could, I, I, could, I could then just crank up MATLAB and just you know, um, turn this crank a few times. And, and actually, you're going to do that for your homework. So you'll, you'll see it's not, or the optional homework that I, by the way, I posted online uh, last night. And so you can, it's worth 10 points, but you can earn 20 points. So, but if you don't do it, then I'll just use the average of the rest of your homework. Okay, so so the, these are both going to be huge. So we can't store either all of this matrix M or all of this this uh, vector Q on one machine. Okay, so so um, um, so we have to divide up the Q and the M, and so the key things are going to be this Q plus is going to be this, this vector, um, this large M, and it's this transpose of Q. So I need to take these and split these on all these distributed machines in a way so I can run around and map produce and, and get out this Q plus, which is the QI here. And this Q, reason notation, I'll call this Q, this was the QI minus one. Okay, so um, what's a good way to split up this data so I can do this easily? I can think of wanting um, of, so, so usually, often in MapReduce, you assume the data is been split arbitrarily. But now I'm going to assume that I have some control. This could be one round of the MapReduce in order to, you know, send it off to the right location. So how is this vector of matrix multiplication work? Right. I take this this uh, this 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 vector. And for every entry in here, right, so every entry in here, I look at this row of this matrix times this Q. I take this Q, I hit it with this row, and I get out an element, right? So if I want to not store this all on one machine, how should I break this up? Break every row. So actually, the row is not going to be. Um, um, the, the, the row is not typically going to be how this is done. So each column sort of corresponds with the web page. So we're actually going to tend to keep the web pages um, somewhat together. Further, but you have a different. I was going to say row as well, or maybe we could even have if we had enough computers, every cell did its own. But yeah. So, um, so, so if you do every cell, then you're going to have to send this whole vector, essentially, or uh, um, so. Um, so the first, well, okay. So you you could do that, but that might be that's a single link. Of a single web page, and that's going to be a little bit small scale. So, typically, they they do it. Um, they use a little bit more locality, and I'll, as I progress through the techniques, I'll maybe explain a little bit. I'll be clear of why in a second. But the first idea is to use what's called striping. Um, okay. So, um, so who's so who's it? There are a few people here who've taken like. Um, high performance computing or work in that area, right? So, so, so you might do like striping of a matrix. And what this means is that this whole column here only corresponds with, with this part of the page. 
right? So it means you can also break up this Q into um, these these uh, these stripes as well, right? So, so you're going to break this into k um, sets of um, columns, right? And so then I broke this this uh, this Q vector up into k pieces as well. And so now what I um, so then I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to so if I look at one stripe. I'm going to pass to it, so let's, let's call this mi, and then I'm going to correspond with it with this this part of this vector qi, and I'm going to each of these I'm going to output to um, actually let's call these j's columns are j's and rows are i's. So so this this uh, this row uh, is is going to output um, to some value. Let's call it S J I. Or um, and so what I'm going to so so this I'm going to think of this as a key value pair. It's going to be um, so it's it's just going to have the the row. Um, it's going to be row I. And S J I, which is going to be equal to M J I. So this this stripe, the I throw in it, and it's going to be times Q J. So the the key is going to be the row that's going to get this element here, and the and the uh, the value is going to be the result of the multiplication. Of this row of n j with this piece of this uh, with this vector which I have on the node, which I have on this computer. Um, so this is going to be the map, and then on the reduce, um, I am just going to say q plus i is um, is is going to get. So this is going to be the output element of this uh, of this output vector. This is going to get the sum over j of these values s j i. So if you stripe up if you stripe up this this matrix, then you can you can output this. Okay. So what are so this this, does this at least make sense how this works? Okay, so what are the possible problems with this? So how big is the output of one of these um, of, of one of these stripes? So this all needs to fit on one machine. I'm going to output something for every row here, for every web page. So each of the stripes is outputting an element of Q plus, which I'm going to need to add this up. Right. So is it is this is this going to be a problem? And if I can't fit the whole uh, list of all the web pages on my computer, then is it possible I could actually do this? You're shaking your head. Um, yeah, but um, um, so this is actually a trick question. So, um, so it turns out you could actually do this. Um, this this output, your output of all of these key value pairs for each row, you actually you aren't going to have one of these for each web page. Why is that? So, I stripe this so I can fit this entire stripe in memory. Well, maybe this should be weird, right? How can you fit a whole stripe in web page if the if the height of this column is all the web pages? It's sparse. Right. 
Um, this is sparse, right? This is mainly zero. So I don't actually store the, it like a matrix. I store it like a web page with, with a list of links on it. Right? And so most of these links are, are not going to be there, so it's a zero. So when I do this multiplication, or I don't only have to, I only have to do the multiplication if there's a non-zero element in here. So I don't produce anything for this row, for this ith web page, if, um, if, if the output is zero. And I know that by looking to see if there's anything in this value now. I can assume that this guy is going to be dense. So this, this little chunk I have is going to be dense. But this stripe is going to be very sparse. So I can, so I'm not sure how big the output's going to be, but it's going to be no larger than the, the size of my stripe. Okay, so, um, so this works pretty well as a first iteration. Um, and in fact, you know, you could think of each of these being, um, you could think of treating each of these web pages to see if it has a link to page i as, as an individual um, key value pair. For row i, instead of multiplying by the entire matrix, you could think of, um, you know, it, it may not be stored in this way, it may be stored by pages. And then in, in that case, you're going to have a bunch of these which are going to have a small value that you're going to need to add them up for each of the columns of the stripe. You could think of that being some sort of combiner phase. Right, so, so this is implicitly a sum. This is implicitly has some combiner phase inside of it because you may be storing these as a web page. So if, think of how would Google store this matrix? Well, it says, here's a bunch of web pages, and I'm going to, for each of the links, I'm going to increment something. Right, so I may store it as web pages and then combine these together on the output before I send to the shuffle. So this, this makes sense, and actually the more I can, I can combine together, um, it's better because I need to spend less time on the shuffle things. I want to minimize the amount of data I send on the shuffle. So I want to maximize how much I can actually combine together. So if, if I want to combine together more, um, then there's, there's actually a slightly better way I can decompose this. Right? So, um, so, this would be my matrix M, and what's the name of this? Um, um, right, so instead of striping, I'm going to do what's called um, tiling. And so tiling will break up this matrix into a set of in, into some tiles. Um, so before I had k sets of columns, now I'm going to have l equals square root k by by um, l equals square root k uh, tiles. So now one column is a web page. And I've stored, and I store each of these tiles on one machine. Um, and so, so this web page, I only care about the links going to a particular set of pages. I'm only going to store those on this particular machine. And now I can store more pages on this machine. <coughs> and so now, if I look at Q, I'm going to strike it into these um, square root k pieces. Um, and so now if I look at one of these operations, I'm going to have, I'm going to call this MI, uh, MIJ, and this will be the corresponding um, QJ cell here. So if I look at um, then the output here, is um, so, so, so each of these rows is is going to be um, multiplied by this, and this is going to be my output to a key value. Right. So still, um, the map is is going to say for row i, I'm going to do um, sij is equal to 
MIJ, uh, let's call this S times QJ. And then the reduce will do the same. But what's the better here is I'm going to have, I'm going to do a lot more combining at this space. So the, the more combining I do means the less I do in the shuffle step. Um, so what is the downside of this compared to here? What happens, I, I, I'm going to need to store more things on each machine in this step than I would in this step. What is, what's worse about this? So here, I stored everything in M and Q once. How much? How much did these there? So, so M is 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 the entire web graph, right? So I can store one tile on one computer. How much bit is there? How much what? How much bit is that M I J? So it's as much as I can store on my computer. Computer um, means this. So, uh, so. You can actually, it, it, they're, they're different. So inside Google, people aren't sure. At least it's not public how they do it. There's some things where they have a lot of RAM on the machine and they can actually store it all in memory. Um, but you can actually, if you're careful about it, you can store this in disk and you can only, you can stream through it uh, once. You don't have to, you don't have to pull it off disk multiple times. So, so you could you could think of be either doing it in, in one of the apps, but but this I'm only going to store once. The downside is this this segment here. This piece of Q, I need to store in each of these computers. I I have to replicate each of these pieces. Right. So I'm storing Q square root K times. Um, so. Um, it, 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 so, um, from what I've read, it turns out that the actual um, um, doing the combiner phase, um, I, I mean, um, do, doing the shuffle step is much faster uh, in, in this case than it is in the, in, if you're just doing the striping. So this actually works better, even though that you're storing this, each of these segments uh, square kit times. Um, so the, the space here really is not um, too much of a problem. <coughs> so you're already storing square root k of these web pages on this, on this machine. So you can store this, which is no more than the size of each of these web pages. And so if you look at, um, OK, so, so let me go through an ex a small example of this. OK, so let me. You're going to see that there's going to be some other optimizations you can do, you can do along the way. Um, values by, by beta, so there's actually some, um, some beta in front here, and also in front here, and uh, then in this reduce phase, you need to add in this uh, um, um, 1 minus beta here. You can just do this in this reduced phase, and uh, it's very simple. Um, and if you and and if you when the computer is deciding how to shuffle, when the mapper system behind it is deciding how to shuffle, it can send all of these q q plus to the actual node where it's going to be used in the next round. So so you can you don't have to move these mijs or these. MJ stripes in between rounds. You just need to move these pieces here. Correct. Um, so this 
be a pretty simple matrix. So this is going to be a simple, simple graph A, B, C, D, or and so let's see, A is going to have links to B, C, and D. B is going to have links to, to A and to D. C will only have a link to B, and D will have He will have a link to uh, B and to C. Okay. So now, if if we're doing, um, um, so so the matrix will look like this, but it'll have actually actually a lot more zeros in it. It's going to be generally very very sparse. Um, so um, so. If we do the stripes, so um, for instance, I won't write them all down. You can find them in the notes. And you could have this be a stripe, just one web page, right? And this is going to be zero, zero, one half, right? But but actually, how how this will be stored in in memory. Um, you're not going to store it in a matrix with all these zeros, but you're going to you're going to write it down something like two with uh, um, one half one and right. So, so this will be stored stored like this. So it's, 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 it's at page B, and it's one half time goes to A, one half the times to D. So I didn't need to write anything down for where the zeros are. Right? And so if I'm doing a, if instead I'm doing a, um, a uh, um, if I'm doing the tiling instead, this is going to be tile 2, 2. Right? This was tile 1, 1, 1, 2. Um, two one. This is a two two, um, and so now m two two, which was zero zero one half zero. So, so all I have to store here is um, going to be. Um, So this is all I have to store here. I just have one element here, right? If instead I've I've got something, um, if, if instead I'm doing this tile here, this is tile two one, then then all I'm going to store is is going to be um, Two of these things now. Um, right, and so you can see that if if I'm so so if if this is the case, then if I have input, so this is supposed to process input from um, if you're having something come. At state C, it would have been sent onto this node M22. Um, but actually, there's nothing I need to process for something coming into C. Because I only have something stored for D. So that means I don't have to do any work here. So I don't even need to get sent information for this. Um, it's part of uh, anything for matrix C. So even though I had to store 
um, this part of QI in multiple multiple locations, I don't actually need to store everything with it in multiple locations. You're going to get a lot of this redundancy where you don't need to store all the stuff here. Um, similarly, if you look at, um, for instance, this this uh, um, this tile M one two. Um, so what I'm going to store here is going to be just um, is going to be let's see uh, B let's see uh, C one B and one half. What's happening here is that um, I'm outputting both of these to B, right? So, so, so that the input is going to come from C, and so I'm going to get um, so the output key value pair is 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 going to be B, where I'm where I'm the place where I'm sending this to, and it's going to be the um, Q at the value at the value C. Um, uh, times one plus um, one half. So I'm sending all of this to B, but I should have sent something to A here. But I, um, but, but actually I don't need to, right? I don't need to send something out to A. So my output here, you know, I'm I'm, I'm going to get a, a lot more of this thing where I'm doing. This combining here, and I'm not getting, and I'm still going to be having some sparsity on the output. I don't need to send anything to this uh, location A coming from here. All right. Um, so, um, so this is is the gist of how um, of how MapReduce is done, on how PageRank is. Uh, um, um, is done in memory. So um, each of these, you know, the steps of this, each of the map and reduce function is going to take in things like this and it's going to be very simple to implement. Um, but by de deciding how you break up this, this matrix, it can actually make some certain uh, improvements pretty, pretty easily. Okay, so uh, um, I guess I've finished a few minutes early. Um, so any, any um, any questions about this or all right so um, on on Wednesday let's see where are we we're gonna get back to so the last couple days have been more about this kind of these computational techniques um, using MapReduce to scale up really large we're, we're gonna get back to more of the analysis of graphs the last two lectures on Wednesday will be about um, different ways of, of um, 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 finding um, um, community structures on graphs, um, and then on uh, the last day of class on Monday, we'll talk about um, how to do graph sparsification. So you have a very large graph, and and these are actually they're sparse, but they're not. Um, so the, 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 there are two types of being sparse. One is um, where um, the uh, where the number of edges is equal to an absolute constant times the number of vertices, and this is how it grows. But in practice, things are actually look more like um, B times one plus um, alpha, where alpha is going to be, you know, something like one over ten. So it's not really many of the number of edges. People thought this was true for a while, but this is at really large graphs. They don't tend to grow like this. They tend to more Grow slightly polynomial. So you want to reduce it back to something that looks like this, but maintains a lot of the properties of the graph. So that's what we'll see next week. All right. Um, and if you should have turned in your homework already. And